Hey guys, and welcome to a new sentence video in 2024. Now, I've done a couple of these before. I usually do around one per year at this point. And I just wanted to show you guys what settings I'll be using going into the new year, going into 2024 season. And so you guys can copy them or use something similar or just kind of use them to base your settings off. Let's get straight into it. Okay, training. First off, nice and easy. Game speed is at 100%. Now, I do recommend putting this down 60% sometimes. Now, bear with me because I know a lot of you will think I'm crazy. But putting the game speed down, some of you will be aware, it does help with warming up. It does help with learning specific mechanics. You can turn that game speed down, see what movement your car is doing, get specific points when you're trying to learn specific mechanics like air dribbles, for example. It allows you to slow it down, break the mechanic down into smaller compartments and learn it easier, basically. Now, it's also useful to warming up. Of course, if you spend a good, I'd say five to 10 minutes minimum, just going around like this in free play, even though it will feel really, really strange at the start, you will get used to it. And once you turn that game speed up again, your car will feel super light. Your game feels really quick and your car, you basically just feel more smooth. Now, a lot of you will be thinking, who haven't tried this before, Jack, you know, why would you not turn up the game speed? Obviously on PC, you can do that with Bacchus mod. And if I turn up the game speed and go, you know, really, really quick like this, then surely I'll be, you know, practicing moving really fast around the pitch and predicting this ball at you know high speed and then when you slow it down you'll be you know seeing the game in slow-mo it just doesn't work obviously rock league is a really feel based game your car will feel super heavy i mean i've done that for about six seconds and i even feel a little bit weird now to, going back to the speed so it doesn't really work slow the game down that's completely fair don't do it too much just to feel a bit better in game warming up or to practice specific mechanics Okay, second option is boost options. Now, I have this unlimited. Most of you will have it on unlimited as well. You can use standard to replicate an in-game scenario. Now, of course, I recommend doing this if you struggle with boost management. So anyone who's in their ranked game struggling with boost management, perhaps they want to go into free play and figure out how much boost do I need from this position to carry it over all the way to the other side of the pitch or to that midfield line just figuring out what amount of boost you should be using in specific situations with certain mechanics, it can be useful. I do recommend using unlimited boost mainly though. I, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird one because I think free play is just purely you should be using it to practice speed and mechanics, right? You know, trying to hit the ball as many times in a row and trying to hit, hit, next, hit the next ball as quick as you can from the previous ball. That's practicing speed, it's practicing mechanics. So I really like unlimited boost because it just allows you to not worry about having to pick up boost and just simply going for the ball over and over again, trying to shoot the ball, trying to hit the ball over and over again, right? So I don't really like using standard. You kind of get breaks in between of practicing your mechanics. Perhaps that's nice for some people. For me, it's, it's not. It's not really for me. So practice it a little bit of both. I do recommend unlimited unless you struggle with boost management. And very quickly, I've got this on disable goal reset. Obviously, if you want to see your goals or want to see how you performed a specific shot, you can turn that off, but that's really a small thing. Now, gameplay, pretty simple. These are all in high. To be honest, not exactly sure what they do. Something to do with connection, you know, I'm, I'm assuming anyway. Uh, this one is the only one I have to talk about on this screen. Now, I don't know, again, don't know what it is, but input buffer, if you're sometimes lagging, I found that turning this to usually CSTS helps kind of stable, make, make that connection more stable. Don't take what I say as, as proper, you know, technological advice because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good with that stuff, but I've just figured that out on my games. It helps me on my internet anyway and on previous internet providers as well. So just mess around with that if you're lagging. Most of the time, just keeping it on default will do. Now, camera settings. I don't really change these. I've kind of found what I like. I've used these for, I'd say a couple of years now. Basically with FOV, field of view, you want to be having it around 105 to 110. Distance, I'd say 240 to 280 is probably your range that you want. Uh, height, again, 90 to I'd say 110. And angle, minus three to minus five. Stiffness, really most stiffness is kind of fair. I do, I do think having it around 0.3 to... 0.75 or 0.8 at the absolute max is probably best just to keep that in that sweet spot and then swivel speed and transition speed is simply just whatever you prefer of course swivel speed it affects how fast your car camera turns left and right or up and down using your right analog stick and then transition speed some people just don't know this one but um this affects how slow the ball cam changes from free cam 
to the ball. Now, of course, if I switch this all the way up, like I have it to 1.8, it snaps onto the ball really quick. Now, I do recommend having this one a little bit higher. Now, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of flack for that because most players don't, right? But I, I do think it's it's beneficial to have it a little bit higher once you get to those higher ranks, I'm speaking, you know, champ and up. You, you might want to switch it. M mess around with going a little bit higher. Don't go all the way to 1.8 because you will just become worse because um, you won't you just won't be able to process that information as quick as as you could with having it a little bit lower at the start um so have it around i'd say 1.4 and then maybe go up now there are the best players in the world uh some are still on like one or 1 1.2 or something um so it's really not the end of the world but i do recommend messing around with it seeing what you like and then i don't know this this is i just want to put this in there real quick because rocket league what are you doing man You've still got players like Jesse on your, you know, saved pro player camera settings in the game. I mean, my coach is on here. My coach is still on there. You know, they, they, he didn't play. I don't know what these, I don't know what Rocket League is doing with this. They, they need to update this and add, add new pros in. Let me know in the comments if you know who Aon is. See, see who the true kind of OGs and, and uh, hardcore sweats of the eSport. I want to see that. Controls, guys. Let's go into view or change binders. Don't know why I read it out loud like that. Jump, I've got an X, pretty simple. Boost on R1. I'm a big advocate for boost on R1. I really think it's it's not necessary at all. Again, most of the best pro players in the world are using circle still. It's just what they got used to. I do think R1 boost is, I don't want to say it, but objectively better, I do. Because it just, it, the control I, the controls I have, every kind of finger or every every control on, on the on the controller, you can just, you, you can just press normally. Right, you don't have to use claw. You don't have to break your knuckles to reach certain things at, at specific points. It's just normal. Apart from having to use your thumb for specific, you know, for, for the X button and the, the circle button, that's that's it, right? So I've got boost on R1. It allowed me to reach balls that were just straight above my head with aerials. Now, it was, it was a really weird thing, but when I went pro, I couldn't reach balls, or I could, but very, very not consistently at all, that were just straight up. And I don't know what it was. I just could not get that movement down. After I went pro, I was already pro at this point. I was, a, I was a decent pro at this point on Dignitas. And then I switched to R1 Boost. So no matter what rank you guys are at, you can change your controls. No matter how drastic it is. So I've got Boost on R1. Big advocate for that. Try it out. Power Slide on L1. Again, that's really, in my opinion, uh, objectively better than Square, which is the default. Uh, and the same with Aerial on L L1, which was Square again. Both of these buttons, I think, should be on the same one um, because one is on the ground and one is in the air. You're not going to press them at the same time or mess up the timing of them when you're trying to transfer from one to the other because you can't use them at the same time, okay? So I recommend having those both on the same button. Uh, and then apart from that, I've got uh, ball cam on triangle and arrow right on circle, arrow left on square. Um, again... It's all, all the buttons are really simple. Arrow right is on the right side of my controller. Arrow left is obviously on the right side still, but it's on the left side of those four buttons. It just keeps everything nice and smooth in the same spot. So I really recommend these controls, to be honest with you. Now for steering and aerial sensitivity and for the dead zones, I have the steering at 1.3 and also for the aerial. Now I used to have these a little bit higher at 1.4 steering and 1.64 aerial. Now, don't ask me why I had it at 0.24 of a difference. Uh, I just did. It felt pretty good. I enjoyed it for pretty much about three or four years, I think, at that sensitivity. But I, I recently switched down around two or three weeks ago. Uh, I just wanted to test it out and haven't changed it since. Feel pretty good in game. So I'm just keeping it at that. So 1.3. Now, I recommend having these at either one. I, I think you can go all the way down to one, to be honest with you. I think that's completely fine. All the way up to, I'd say, four at the absolute max. Now, there are a couple of players, high-level players, very, very good players that use above four. Um, Monkey Moon, one of the best players to you know ever play the game. He, he's at 3.9, which is very, very close to that max kind of threshold I recommend. And a couple of other players are above that. So you can do it. I just don't think it's optimal, but mess around with it. It's one you should practice. If you want to go up or down, don't do it in one go. You will become inconsistent and you will see a, a, a drop in skill because of it. Increase it or decrease it in 0 0.05 increments, I recommend. Um, it just helps you go up or down a little bit uh, in, a, in a smoother pattern and not go 
all the way up or down at once. Now, control dead zone, 0 0.05, dodge dead zone at 0.7. Now, control dead zone, I recommend having between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. Now, uh, some players, you know, prefer to go up to 0 0.1 here because their controller, they feel like uh, they have stick drift on 0 0.05. Completely fair argument. If that's you, maybe go up a little bit. If you can, I don't recommend going much higher. Again, I've not really practiced with that. I just, most, every player doesn't. I've never seen a player with higher than 0.1 dead zone. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but it's definitely possible. You can still play well with it. Dodge dead zone, 0.7. I've seen it increase this over time. I had it at 0.5, which was the, the, the standard, I think. And I increased it to 0.6 for about a year. I've gone up to 0.7 around six months ago. Probably go up to 0.75. Who knows? Who knows? But I, I think this is a little bit better to have it around 0.6 to 0.8. I find you can aerial quicker with having the dodge dead zone higher because it allows you to really quickly fast aerial without accidentally backflipping every time. It allows you to do those faster movements without risking uh, flipping when you're using an empty jump, which is usually when you're recovering and when you're going up for balls, okay? And lastly, control the vibration. Turn that off, man, unless you're a, a, a freak. If you want it on, you can have it on. Look, some people enjoy it. I, I, I don't know. It's That's never been for me. Horrible saying. Okay, interface. Now, interface scale, that doesn't really change much in game. Display scale, neither does that. Now, nameplate scale is the one that you can use to your benefit in game. Of course, if you've got nameplates a little bit higher, let's say the ball's over here, you're all the way back, you might want to see if an opponent is close to the ball. Having a little bit of a higher nameplate spell, uh, nameplate scale, sorry, can affect that positively. You can see your opponents closer to the ball whenever they are or further away. It helps with um, you know depth depth perception. You can never say that in a, in one take. So I recommend maybe turn that up a bit. Now I don't know what the standard was. It might be 150, and I might not have turned it up at all because I'm just used to it over the years. It might be 130. Might be the default. I'm not sure though. Um, but some players, I know Rettles likes this a little bit higher, I think. So mess around with that. It can help a lot of you. Match notifications. Most players turn this to, I think, time updates only. Um, I think I think that's what they use. I'm pretty sure this is the one that makes, you know, save notifications pop up whenever you make a save or get a shot. Now, I have always had this on. I've always been clowned on by pros of having this on because they all turned it off. I'm just used to it. I don't even recognize the things popping up on my screen anymore, so... I do probably recommend turning it to time updates only. It's probably a little bit more efficient, um, but I just keep this off because I'm a bit stubborn. Now, connection quality indicators, you can turn that on and off if you're lagging, see if you're, you're lagging or not. Colorblind mode. Now, a lot of players actually, or well, not a lot, but I know a couple, my teammate being one chronic, and I know LJ uses it as well, that use colorblind mode on. Now, it changes the way the game looks slightly. I think cars look... A, quite a lot of different cars almost look default and then the rest of these i just recommend keeping on probably apart from item shop because really no one cares and then obviously these three should be should be on for sure um just helps with seeing where the ball is in certain points and stuff like that obviously actually this one does really doesn't matter depends if you like metric or imperial units and apart from that you can have these on. And that is interface video settings. Most of you want to see these. I know I get a lot of questions about video settings pretty much all the time in my streams and stuff. First off, V-Sync, if you're on PS4 or Xbox, listen to me or PlayStation 5 uh, nowadays. If you're on those platforms, turn V-Sync off. Turn it off, please. I was a, I think a 1600 uh, rated player when I had V-Sync on. And Virtuoso, who was 1600 at the same time as me, and Jorius, most of you guys will know those two players. I think we were all 1600. And we all turned it off at fairly similar points, V-Sync. And we skyrocketed it up about 200 MMR up to 1800. Now, I'm not saying that's what you guys will do, but it will improve you if you stick with it and if you practice with it off. When you have it on, you have more input lag, but your game technically looks smoother. When you turn it off, you'll see your screen tearing almost, like it's a little bit framey. And it will feel really bad at the start, but it reduces input lag quite a lot. On, especially on consoles, uh, from what I found. That's a non-negotiable. Don't argue with me in the comments. Turn it off. Even if it looks terrible at the start, keep it off. You'll get used to it. These, very quickly, we've got off, high-quality custom, 360. Um, 
Yeah, pretty simple. High quality, obviously, if I play its high performance, it looks terrible. Um, I think, I guess this is just depending on how, how high your PC can run it or your console can run it. And then on this side, um, all just all the lowest on this. High performance, performance, and then low intensity. I turn all these off. I know a couple of players do enjoy playing with high quality shaders on. Uh, I think first killer is, is one, if I'm not wrong. Um, he plays with high quality on. I personally could never do that. I think Justin might, but I might have made that up. I think I saw it in one of his streams, but I, I could have lied on that one. Uh, but I have it off. You can practice with it, with it on or off. I recommend having all of these off, to be honest. It just makes your game um, run a little bit better from what I found, feel a little bit smoother, and it just looks more simple. So it really depends what you're playing for. If you're playing for performance, I recommend turning them all off. If you're playing to have a good time and just enjoy the game and see it for what it could be and how, how good it could look, then maybe turn a couple of them on, like high quality shaders or lens flare or whatever these are. Don't turn motion blur on, that's disgusting. And then apart from that, that's video settings done. Audio, you guys can take a screenshot or whatever. I'm not going to go through that. And same with chat settings. You guys can have, have fun with that. Um, so yeah, you can screenshot that because I do sometimes get people asking what my chat settings are. Not too sure why. But that is it for the camera settings, for the video settings, for my in-game settings for 2024. Guys, if you have any questions, please do drop them in the comments. I will try and look at a couple of the questions, see what I can answer, see what I can help you guys with. But other than that, send this to your friends if they want to see what settings to use. I'll see you guys later. Take care.